We are discussing thyroid cancer with Dr. Marsha Bros, Assistant Professor and Director of Thyroid Cancer Therapeutics Program at the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us, Your Highness. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to be here. Thanks okay. for inviting me. Really, thanks for coming by. So what is the scope of thyroid cancer? So thyroid cancer for most patients is curable. Over 90% of the patients will do well. They're usually treated just by endocrinologists and they get radioactive iodine and will do well for a long, long time. Uh, patients who don't do well, however, have had really abysmal choices. Uh, the last time a drug was approved for them was in 1974. It was adriamycin. And by our current standards, we would say it just doesn't work. It has toxicity with no benefit. So until just recently, in the last few years, there were really no options for these patients. So it wasn't even an oncology field. What is behind the recent rise in thyroid cancer? Well, there's, there's thought that it, it's probably twofold. There's a large number of people who are getting diagnosed now because scans are more common. They're being used for different things. So there is a, just an increase in detection. But in addition, there, it seems to be that it's also just on the rise for reasons that we're not really aware of. What are the current treatment options for advanced thyroid cancer? Well, for advanced thyroid cancer, as I said, so adriamycin didn't work, and that was the last thing was, was provided in, 70, in 74. Now, actually, the new uh, class of agents, the kinase inhibitors, are showing some remarkable activity. And many of them actually have data showing that they, if they don't always produce a, a full response, they certainly stabilize the disease, and they stabilize it for a considerable amount of time. And the reason that's important is even if they don't shrink it by a lot, these patients have had to have ongoing treatments for their progressions, whether it's surgeries, external beam therapy, they've had a lot of morbidity associated with this slow progression. And now with these kinase inhibitors, just the fact that they don't progress for an extended period of time right there is already a huge improvement to their quality of life. Can you tell us about the design of your study? We have had two major studies at our institution. The first was a phase two study that was a single agent study, I mean a single arm study, where all patients got serafinib. And that actually did very well. It was actually published early at the JCO in 2008 because the effect was so large. Um, that study is now just coming to completion and the final reports of those are now being prepared. And now our new study that we presented here is really to start addressing what do we do for the people who do well on serafinib and then eventually stop responding. So they start having progression. And it's based on some data that we have that came from the tissue from the patients we treated earlier. And so what it is is it takes patients who've progressed on serafinib and it takes them and adds in a new agent, which is Everolimus. And it looks to see whether or not we can again arrest the progression of the disease. So this is also a single arm study. All patients will get both drugs. Um, it's unique for two reasons. One, as I said, it, it actually continues the serafinib. So historically, you usually stop the agent that didn't work. But in our experience, even when there's progression, it's clear that the serafinib is often working for many of the sites, maybe not all of them. And so it was very important for us, we realized that if we didn't continue the serafinib, even if the new agent helped the new, uh, the new lesions, sometimes the old ones would start activating again. So for that reason, we actually keep serafinib going, we add on everolimus. Now the problem is what the toxic dose is going to be. It will probably vary widely depending on patient's toler tolerability with serafinib and then also with the new agent. So practically speaking, we were thinking going ahead when we want, want to apply this, we'll need to figure out what the right dose is. And so that's actually how the design of the trial is set up, so that everybody starts with sort of a middle dose of serafinib and a middle dose of, of everolimus, and then they get dose adjusted to figure out what their maximum tolerated dose is, and then they continue at that. And so if sort of from two perspectives, it's a unique design, and it will also hopefully be a design that will be much easier to translate into practice if we find promising results at the end. I know because your heart's so much into your work, there's one aspect that you'd really like to discuss, and that's your clinical trials portfolio. Yeah, the program has actually really evolved, and it's come from the point of view that I didn't want to just have one study for one subset of patients. Thyroid cancer comes in many flavors. There's anaplastic thyroid cancer, medullary thyroid cancer, poorly differentiated and differentiated. And we really are very clear now that they're quite a different disease, and they needed to be studied separately. 
That said, since there are no standards of care for any of these three, we felt it's important that all of our patients who are getting treated be done in a clinical trial setting so that we learn whether or not agents are working, and if they're not working, we can put them aside much faster. There are not a lot of thyroid cancer patients out there, so in our, in our clinic, over 90% to 95% of our patients are all being treated within the context of a clinical trial. Therefore, we have both a first-line um, trial for patients who are getting serafinib maybe for the first time. They're, they'll go on the phase three uh, trial to study that agent alone. And then when they progress, there are two or three additional uh, agents we're bringing in to try to see whether they might work for progressive disease. We're also going to have open trials for anaplastic, and we also have open trials for medullary thyroid cancer. And my goal being that every patient who comes to us, regardless of subtype, regardless of their prior treatment, would have options available at the University of Pennsylvania. So now we're going to have probably about six to seven trials open by next year, and, and that's very exciting for us. It makes me feel good that I don't have to turn anybody away. So. That's really exciting news, and I wish you the best of luck with it. Thanks for having me. Dr. Marsha Brose, Assistant Professor and Director of Thyroid Cancer Therapeutics Program, the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania, joining us on Occupy.tv.